Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Father Arthur McKay, and we are assisted by Lynn Burns, our music director. We are now at the Parish Center of St. Michael's Church in Bedford, Mass., with the assistance of our pastor, Father Kevin Toomey. This morning's Mass is the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time in Cycle A, and the topic of our Mass is this coin, a coin that has two sides a side of a face of Caesar, and the other side is a symbol of the temple of Israel, the temple of Jerusalem. A simple coin called a Daenerys, a coin that was the wage of a worker. This coin will play a role in today's gospel as Jesus tells us what is God's and what is Caesar's. So today we now take a moment to think about what we'd like to offer in this Mass as our private intentions. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And as we prepare now to celebrate this mystery, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord my, our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together we do the glory of glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. 
I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Psalm 96. The response, give the Lord glory and honor. Together, give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among his nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Together, give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. Together, give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Together, bring gifts into his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Together, give the Lord glory and honor. The second reading is a reading of St. Paul, a letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Savanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. Alleluia. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Together, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the words of this gospel in my heart and my mind as I live they proclaim. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of this gospel wipe away our sins. I showed you a coin. This is a Daenerys, a Daenerys from Jerusalem. When I was in Jerusalem in 2014, 
I was able to get this Daenerys because I wanted something to show people and also in religious education. I wanted the children to actually touch this Daenerys and say, this is the type of coin that Jesus would have held up. But you know what's interesting is this coin would have been used in Jerusalem and in all of Israel because Rome had conquered Israel. So this is a Roman coin. But Jesus is talking with the Pharisees and the Herodians in the temple area. These coins were not permitted. When you entered the temple area, you would turn in your money and you would get the temple coin. Only the temple coin was allowed for sacrifice or for any transactions in the temple area. Isn't it interesting that Jesus says, show me a coin? And the Pharisees and Herodians have this very coin in their hands, which they're not supposed to have. You see, this coin is a symbol not only of Rome, but of slavery. A coin that has Caesar's face on the front and a symbol of the temple on the back, showing that Caesar is trying to dominate the temple and not God. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and on the back, give to God what is God's. But a lady named Dorothy Day once said that if we truly gave to God what is God's, there'd be nothing left for Caesar. Bishop Fulton Sheehan noted that Jesus was really offering the people a new kind of freedom to those oppressed in Israel, that the leaders and the people were testing Jesus because they were tired of the yoke of Roman control by Caesar. And yet, they used Caesar's coin to try to trap Jesus, the coin that symbolized slavery, to try to enslave Jesus on this very day. To the Israelites and their leaders, the word freedom meant throwing off the yoke of Caesar and throwing off the yoke of Rome by overthrowing the slavery caused by Caesar. The people misunderstood that the freedom Jesus offered them was beyond just liberation from Rome. That true freedom is liberation from sin. And to acquire this freedom for us, Jesus would submit himself voluntarily as a ransom for this sin. If people only understood the symbol that that coin represented, they would understand that Jesus came to restore their spiritual rights between God and all people, that the physical would be healed once the spiritually bound souls were free. Jesus would not lift a finger to change their coinage, but he would lift his life to render unto God the things which are God's. I ask that we think about another gospel, the gospel of John. There was a time when Jesus got into an argument with the Pharisees about freedom. He said to the Pharisees, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free in the gospel of John chapter eight. But the Pharisees and the people answered Jesus saying, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say, you will become free. And Jesus answered them, Amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if a son frees you, then you will truly be free. What the people and the Pharisees just don't understand is that our self-indulgence in this physical world is another proof of being ruled by the tyrant of lies. It happens that John Chrysostom, one of the saints that lived in Constantinople, he said this, that we weren't bloodied. Our swords weren't used. We weren't even wounded. And yet we obtain a victory from Christ Jesus, because he does the work and we enjoy the benefits. 
St. Augustine said that Christ died once perfectly for us and that on the solemnity of the Mass, when we come together and celebrate, we renew what Christ did perfectly once. Caesar died and he left a coin. The Roman coins did not have images of living people until 44 BC when Caesar began allowing this on the Roman coinage. Usually, Roman coins would have a picture of a god or a picture of some value or part of Rome. But Caesar wanted more. Caesar wanted to be a god and the Roman people began deifying their emperors to say, we have our God, we have made our God, a physical God on a piece of metal to rule us forever. When we come to what we call the part of faith, when we are in the mass, we will hear something called the mystery of faith. The Greeks called the mystery of faith the anamnesis, when we remember. I'm going to ask and remind you when we're in the Eucharistic prayer that when I say the mystery of faith and we say that together, we're going to say, save us, Lord. We're going to repeat that because we're going to remember. Remember what Jesus did for us, that we are not reenacting what Jesus did, but we are reliving that what Jesus did according to spirit he went beyond his flesh. Yes, he suffered, died, but he was resurrected. Caesar died, and we try to remember him with a coin. Jesus is with us in the real presence today. You see, Jesus said he'd never leave us. And Jesus told us that we would not die in our sins if we simply asked for help and we worked with the grace. Our choice is to stay with the coin and die in our sins. Or to go beyond this coin today. Give to God what is God's. That's our soul. Give to Caesar what is Caesar. We can live in this physical world and do what we must do. But let's not forget our soul and how we can be free from sin. I now ask that we pray a prayer. A prayer called the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray that we go beyond a world of coins and physical to a world of spiritual as we now pray for Pope Francis and for Cardinal Sean, that they help us move beyond the physical to remember how we can be free from our slavery to sin. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our dead, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Michael Parish and for the parishioners of the Archdiocese of Boston, we pray to the Lord, Lord, 
hear our prayer. For our pastor, Father Kevin Toomey, that he be supported and that St. Michael's Church be supported. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And now for the private intentions that we've brought to this Mass in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And together now, let's pray one Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus took bread at the Last Supper and said the prayer of Baruchel. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Jesus then took wine, and he added water to the wine. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Then Jesus said the Baruchelic prayer, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive our sacrifice with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. This is the prayer over the offerings. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is preface number six of Sundays of Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is Eucharistic prayer number three. You're indeed holy, O Lord, in all you have created, rightly give you praise. For through your, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
We are now at the anamnesis or the mystery of faith. This is the third mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her most blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to Enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, a mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the blood of Christ give me safe eternal life. The blood of Christ give me safe eternal life. This is the real presence of Jesus Christ. This is no coin. This is no physical that ends. This is eternal, the real presence of Jesus Christ. Please gaze on ocular communion.
the communion antiphon. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the blessings of Almighty God descend upon all of us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.